Hi and welcome to my tutorial on how to knit a hat. Uh, we're gonna use Tin Can Knits Barley Hat Pattern uh, which makes this guy, minus the fluff on the front, <laughs> which makes this guy here. Um, it's not my pattern, it's their pattern, but it is a free pattern that they designed to help people learn how to knit hats. Um, I've used this pattern to teach several of my friends to knit hats um, and they have found the videos to be more helpful than if um, than by following the written instructions because everyone learns differently. So hopefully this can help you in conjunction with their stuff to learn how to knit a hat. Um, for this hat we use two 16 inch circulars, um, so a US 6 and a US 8, and then double points at the top in a US 8. Um, if you want to know how to make the hat entirely using Magic Loop, it's the exact same instructions, it's just a different way of doing it. Um, some people find that helpful. Um, if you want to know how to make this using Magic Loop instead of 16 inch circulars and double points, I made a tutorial where you, um, where we make this guy, which is the toddler size barley hat, using entirely Magic Loop. I will put a link here, here, probably also down in the doobly-doo. Um, if you want to learn how to make the hat with 16 inch circs, uh, or not 16, this is magic loop, this is, this is 16 inch circs. So um, they are obviously the same hat, it's just two different ways to make a hat. But yeah, so if you want this uh, for magic loop, click uh, the link. If you want to see how to make it with 16 inch circulars and double points, stay right where you are. I forgot to add that if you have questions as we're going along, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, if I can't get to them, hopefully someone else will be able to answer them. Um, they, the question might be answered later as uh, you watch the video, so if you watch all the way through um, and you still don't have the answer, feel free to ask. I will do my best. Okay, to make our barley hat using 16 inch circulars, we're going to need a US 6 16 inch circular, um, a US 8, this uh, US 6 is 4 millimeter, US 8 is 5 millimeter. We're also going to need some double pointed needles for the end when this needle is too big to go around the small section of the top of the hat. Um, so these are US 8 5 millimeter as well. Um, eventually we're also going to need a darning needle and a measuring tape for the very very end. We're also obviously going to need yarn. I picked this yarn out of my stash from Haiku called Kensington. It's a wool alpaca blend. So we're going to use this to make the hat. Anytime you're making a hat I always recommend having something with wool content if you're going to work with a natural fiber because wool has memory better and will kind of hold its shape. Um, you're also going to need for the 16 inch circ tutorial you're also going to need a stitch marker of some kind. Uh, this little guy is a local maker called Fly Firefly Notes. It's her little kitty cat markers. So, uh, with all that in mind, we're gonna get started. We are going to use a cast on called the Long Tail Cast On. We need a long tail to do so. Um, the super average way to do this is by <laughs> guesstimating. I normally We'll pick something that looks absurd because what we're going to need is both ends of our yarn tail to make the cast on. So this guy here, um, I believe is long enough for my 84 stitches. I normally just like do a couple of arm lengths. Um, there is some trial and error to it. If it doesn't work, you can always rip it out and try again. Um, the more times you do this, the better you will be at casting on. Um, so we're going to make a slip knot. You can make a slip knot however you want. How I like to make a slip knot is we take our loop. We're just going to take do a little twist here. I make little like pincer fingers. And then I go through and I grab the tail and pull it through like that. And it's called a slip knot. And you take it and it comes right out. So just to do it again. We have our loop, twist it over, then we take our little pincer grabby fingers, we grab the tail, and we pull it through. It is very big right now. We're going to take our needle, we're going to put it through the loop, and we're going to pull both tails until it snugs up nice and close. 
to the needle. All right. Now we can move it around. We can start doing our cast on. So the way we do a long tail cast on using both ends, the reason we're using a long tail cast on is because it's more elastic than other cast ons. If there's a different cast on your practical, or there's a different cast on that you prefer, feel free to use it. Um, we're just gonna do a regular long tail cast on. So what I do is I grab both tails with these bottom two fingers um, so I can kind of control them. I put my pointer and my thumb through here. Um, kind of form like a tent, if you can see that. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needle tip, I'm gonna pull it down by my thumb, put it up through the loop, and I'm gonna scoop the other yarn through. So, and then I'll, I pull the yarn over my thumb tight. So, taking the needle, pulling it towards the thumb so it kind of crosses over like this. We're gonna put our needle inside that loop. Then we're gonna pull it towards the yarn that is going over top of our pointer finger. We're gonna pull that guy inside like that. So, needle down by the thumb, open up that hole, pull the yarn through. Now make sure when you're doing this that you don't pull the yarn super tight. Uh, you want it to still be able to move around. Um, if you pull it too tight, you're gonna have a really hard time getting to the stitches when we join in the round in a little bit. So uh, just be careful with that. Uh, because we are making the adult small, I'm gonna cast on 84 stitches. You can count them as you go, or you can count them um, after the fact, but we're gonna cast on 84 here. So we have five, have our 84 stitches. Um, we also have a nice little tail here that's left over that we can weave in when we're done, um, which you'll need. Bare minimum you'll need for weaving in, where's this guy? You'll need like about that much, which I think, because this has no point of reference, <laughs> I think is about four or five inches of yarn. You need enough that you can feed it onto the needle and manipulate it through the fabric. Um, you can also use a crochet hook to do this if you leave too short of a tail, but that's not my preferred way of doing it. So uh, I would recommend making sure you have a decent tail. So at this point, we need to join the hat in the round. We're going to scooch all of the stitches down so they're at both ends of our needle. Then what we're going to do is, if this is your first time knitting in the round, I'm going to suggest you put your needle down on a table like this. Obviously, you can see what a table looks like. <laughs> you want to make sure that this bottom edge of your knitting is all on the inside. You wanna make sure it's all going one direction. Um, you don't want your knitting to be, let's say like this. So, you don't want it to have any twists in it, like it does here. 
Um, if you have a twist in it like this, you're going to end up knitting a Mobius hat, <laughs> which you're not going to be able to wear, and there's no way to fix that. There's a lot of ways to fix a lot of things in knitting by dropping down that you cannot fix at all. All you have to do is twist the yarn around like so. Um, and we're going to want to make sure that our yarn is coming from our right side needle. So we've picked up our knitting um, and we're just going to put a stitch marker on the needle that has the yarn on it. If we can use depth perception, I'm just going to pop that guy right on there. Um, that will mark the beginning of our hat. Um, so we have a nice even brim. Uh, if you don't have like a fancy marker, you can just use yarn or a safety pin, an earring, really anything you want to use. Um, so we're just going to start the ribbing, which is a knit one, purl one ribbing. Um, or in the pattern, it refers to it as K1P1, which is knit one, purl one. It's pretty standard ribbing. Um, so you have your yarn. We're going to take our needle and we're going to put it through the first stitch to do a knit. So we're going to go through, around, and scoop it through, and off. I'm going to take the yarn. We're going to move it to the front. We're going to go through this front loop. I'm going to kind of stab it towards ourselves. Take the yarn, put it over the top like that, and scoop it through backwards. To do a knit, we're going to move the yarn the back again. I'm going to put it through so the working needle is going through the yarn like that. Put the yarn, it goes under and around. And push it back through so you can see it's coming through there and it comes off. Yarn to the front to do a purl. We're gonna, it goes from here through the stitch towards us and the yarn goes over the top Oop. The yarn goes over the top like that you can see that and then we're going to push it backwards so it's going through there and then we push the stitch off so we're going to keep doing knit one Roll one. We're going to do that all the way around till we get back to this side of the cap marker.
Okay, so now that we've gotten to this final stitch, we just did a knit, so we're going to do our last purl. So, stab it through, around, and off. So, now we have this little marker. Whatever you've used for your marker, you can just take it and move it from one needle to the other. And then we're going to start the next round, just the same way we did before, but now everything's nice and connected. So, we're going to keep doing knit one, purl one, and you're just going to keep doing this ribbing till the end of the round, and you're going to keep repeating the round until you've reached the designated amount of inches that is in your pattern, depending on what size you're making. Because I'm making the adult small, the adult size gets you to knit an inch and a half of ribbing. So I'm going to keep working a knit one purl one rib until I have an inch and a half of ribbing. And then I will meet you back here so we can go over how to set up for the garter section and how we're going to switch needles. Okay, so we've knit our inch and a half of ribbing here and we're ready to move on to the setup row of our hat. Um, at this point we need to switch from our US 6 needles, our 4 millimeters, to a 5 millimeter needle. Um, the good news is, is that it's very easy to do this. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're actually going to take our stitch marker off. Just put it aside for now because if we put it on to our new needle it's going to fall right off. So. Um, what I like to do is I like to take my right needle from the size I'm switching from and kind of just pull that out. It can be a little bit awkward at first, but it's not too difficult. So we're going to take our US 8s, our 5mm, and we're just going to use them to knit instead of uh, the right needle of the size that we were already working on. So for the setup row, we have to knit a certain amount of stitches and then put a new marker on. Not this one, a brand new one, because this one marks our beginning of round and we need to mark where the garter panel ends. For the US small size that I'm knitting, we need to knit 28 stitches and then put a new marker on. So I'm going to use my US 8. I'm just going to put the needle in to knit like I would if I was using the previous set of needles. And I'm going to take the yarn wrap it around and I'm just going to knit that stitch. So I'm going to knit 27 more stitches. We have our 28 stitches from the beginning of the round to where we need to put our marker. In the pattern it's marked as PM, which means place marker. I'm going to suggest having a different marker than your beginning of round marker just so you don't get confused as you're knitting around. I have a little marker here. Um, it's a clippy style marker, that you, but because they have this like earring back you can just pop them on to your needles. This particular marker is from a store called Corner of Craft. So we've put our marker onto our right needle and we're just going to keep knitting around until we get back around to the start of the round. As I was knitting along this guy kind of hopped off before I got the chance to knit it so we're just going to take him and put it back on the needle. We're going to want to make sure that they are facing the same direction as these guys. I believe I put that on backwards. Yeah, so this loop should be in the back. So I'm just going to switch them around so he matches. So if you look, the yarn coming from essentially the front of the stitch goes over the front, like so. Um, when it was sitting like this, the yarn from the back of the stitch was in the front, which means it was twisted. Structurally, it'll be fine if you knit it twisted. Um, it just will look kind of different. It's a different knitting technique. Um, structurally, your hat is not going to fall apart. just might look a little bit different in that spot. Um, so, you pop that back on. 
Just keep knitting around. You can tell we're almost at the end of the row because the US 6 is almost entirely out of your hat and you only have a couple of stitches left. So once you've finished those last few stitches, you take the US 6 and you can put it aside. Then we're going to take our beginning of round marker that we put aside before. We're just going to put it back onto our right needle. So, whoop, it's my tail from earlier. It's decided to migrate up here. Don't knit in your tail. It's a frustrating experience. Um, so we're now gonna continue with round one and two of the pattern. Round one is establishing our garter ridge or garter panel that goes up the front. Uh, when you're knitting in the round, if you just kept doing the knit stitch all the way around, you would get stockinette stitch, um, which will be what happens on the other side of this marker. In order to get garter stitch, um, you will have to knit one row and then purl one row. If you are knitting flat, so not in a circle, if you knit every row, you would get garter stitch. Um, and in order to get stockinette, you'd have to purl. But we're knitting in the round to make a hat. Hats are round. So we're going to bring our yarn forward and we're going to put our needle into purl. And we are going to purl until we come to our other marker. So we're one stitch before our marker that divides our garter panel from the rest of the hat. So we're just going to purl that last stitch. We're going to move our marker over from our left needle to our right needle. Just like that. And now we're going to make sure our yarn is in the back. So if you're purling, move the yarn to the back like that. Um, I like to do it before I move my marker. Um, and then you're just going to uh, put your needle in <laughs> to knit like we had on the previous row. So we're gonna knit all the way around until we get back to the beginning of the round. So we're pretty close to the beginning of our round here. So we're gonna knit these last few stitches. Um, perfect, just a little bit of string there, just popped it off. So we're just gonna take our beginning of round marker and we're gonna move it from our left needle to our right needle, just pop it on over. And now we're ready to work round two, which is just knitting all the way around. Um, like I said before, in order to do garter in the round, you have to purl one row and then knit one row. So now we are going to just knit all the way around. Um, in the video, I've been using the terms row and round interchangeably. Um, in the pattern, it does say round and not row. Uh, they do mean kind of the same thing. Round just means that you're knitting in the round. Um, 
and row is generally used when you're knitting flat. Um, but when I'm using them, I mean them interchangeably. So I move from like the beginning of the round to the end of the round. Okay, so we've gotten to our marker that divides our garter panel from the rest of our hat. So we're just gonna knit that last stitch. We're gonna take the marker, move it from the left needle to the right needle. Our yarn's still in back and we're just gonna keep knitting around. So we've made it to the beginning of our round. We're just gonna knit that last stitch, move the marker from the left needle to the right needle, and now we're ready to work round one again. Round one again is purling till this marker and then knitting all the way around. Round two is just where you knit all the way around. We're gonna move our yarn to the front to purl for round one. You're gonna keep working rounds one and two until your hat reaches its desired length depending on the size you're knitting. For the adult small, it's about seven inches. Um, if you want it to be a little bit longer, you can knit it a little bit longer. Um, it's up to you. When you're measuring your hat, don't measure over the garter panel because garter tends to be a little bit shorter than your regular stitches. Um, you're gonna wanna measure from the back of the hat, from the bottom of the ribbing, to wherever your knitting ends. Um, I wouldn't include the stitches that are on the needles, so to about there. The stitches that are on the needles won't add too much height to your hat. So measure on the back of the hat from the ribbing to just under where your stitches are. So I will see you back here with a lot more garter and a lot more hat so we can work the decreases. Okay, so we've now gone ahead and knit the rest of our hat um, from the brim to up here should be whatever your designated length is for me. It's supposed to be seven inches. I knit it to six and a half um, because seven makes it a little bit slouchier. So for me, on the back, it's six and a half inches from here to down here. But we have our hat already to start the decreases. Um, the pattern wants you to make sure that you end on a purl row. So if you haven't, ended on a row that has the, where you've just done the purls and we're ready to do the full knit around round. Uh, go ahead and do that now um, and then come on back. But for those of you who are ready to start the decreases, so we are going to work on the circular needle until the hat becomes too small of a circumference to be able to have our work still kind of meet here because as we decrease it's gonna get smaller. So I have my double pointed needles here, all ready to switch over when it gets too small, but we'll take it one step at a time. So when I put this down, I just did a knit stitch so my marker wouldn't fall off. So I'm just gonna put my needle in there and take that out. So we're back at the beginning of the round. So we're gonna do this setup round where we're going to knit around and put in markers. So if you don't have markers, um, you can grab some. So I dug through my notions pouch and found these little diamond shaped markers. I want one that's different than my beginning of round marker, which is a cat. And then my marker that indicates the end of the garter section, which is a different cat. As we go along, it's going to tell you to knit a certain amount of stitches. We're going to knit two together and then we're going to, the pattern says PM and we're going to place some markers. We're going to put one of these guys in that place. So for my size, cause I'm knitting the adult small, 
we are going to knit 12, knit two together, and then place a marker. Okay, so one, We've knit 12 stitches and we're going to knit two together. So we're going to take two stitches. We're going to put our needle through, not the first one, but the second one, like we we're going to knit. So through this guy, and then we're going to make sure we go also go through that first one. And then we're going to take our yarn just like we have for normal knitting. We're going to go under, um, under and over the top. We're going to pull it through and off. So now we have one less stitch than we did before. Okay, so we've knit two together. We're gonna to take a marker. We're just gonna put that on our needle like we have before. And we're gonna keep knitting our designated amount of stitches and placing markers. So we're gonna knit 12 more stitches. So our little marker indicating the end of our garter section um, is there, and that one's two stitches before the end. So I've knit 12 stitches from here. Um, so now I have to knit two together, like we did before. There we are. And because we already have a marker here, we're not going to put another marker on. We're just gonna slide that over. And then we're gonna keep chugging along. Okay, so I was just knitting along and forgot <laughs> what I was doing, so I'm just gonna make sure. So I have one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I went two stitches too far. If you do this, we can do something that's called tanking, which is knitting backwards. So we're gonna take our needle tip from our left needle and we are going to insert it into the stitch below that we came out of. You're just gonna um, put it in that way. Let me slide it over. So needle goes into the stitch And then we're gonna scooch it over to the end. And it's gonna come off, it's gonna come off the right hand needle onto the left, and then we're just gonna pull the yarn. And there we are. So we can knit our 12. We're going to so through the front of the second stitch, going through both stitches, around, through, and off. In a similar situation that we were in um, for the second marker over here. So we already have a marker on the needles, two stitches before the end. So we're just going to, because we've knit our 12, we're just going to knit two together like that. And then we have our beginning of round marker, which is why all of our other markers are different. So because we know when we get back to here that we're at the beginning. So we're just going to move that over. 
So now that we have all these markers in place, it's going to make it a lot easier to decrease as we go along. We're going to know exactly where to go. So even if we like space out and keep knitting, we um, will be able to put our decreases in the right spot. Just setting us up for future success. So since we just did one round of knitting all the way around, we're now going to have to purl. Um, we're going to purl over to our second marker and then we're going to knit the other way. Um, this round isn't going to have any decreasing in it. It's just a spacer row. If you decrease too quickly, you can get kind of like a pointed kind of cone shape. So that is why we have these spacer rows between the decrease rows. It allows the hat to have a much nicer, slower and gradual decrease. So we've made it to our marker that shows us the end of the garter section. So move our yarn to the back, slip that guy over. As we come to each of these markers, we're just going to slip them just like we just did with this guy. Because um, we're not decreasing, we can just move them over as we chug along. Okay, so we made it back to the beginning of our round. So uh, we've reached our cat, so we're just gonna slip it over. Um, we're done our rest round, so now we're going to do another um, knit round all the way around, and we're gonna decrease out these markers. So just like we did before, it's the same thing, we're just not putting in markers, we're just knitting to two stitches before the marker. So knit to two stitches before the marker, we're going to decrease like we did before, knit two together, and the pattern says SM, which is slip marker, so we're just going to move the guy over that way. And we're just going to do that again. So we're going to keep repeating these decrease sections until we have reached too few stitches to be able to have our needles successfully touch um, like this. If our knitting is too small, it won't. we won't be able to knit with the work so close to the front of the needles. Um, you should be able to get a couple of rows in before we have to switch. Um, I'm going to keep working away on these rows until uh, until I reach that point and then I will show you guys how to switch to the double pointed needles from your circular. So keep repeating the purl and knit rest round and the decrease rounds and we'll see you in a second. I've reached the point in this hat where it's getting a little snug for the yarn to meet. I am doing the third of the um, decrease rest round combo. Um, knowing that I'm going into a decrease round, now is the time I probably want to transition. Um, mainly because it's easier to knit, I find, on a circular. So I wanted to finish that last rest row with the purl and the knit sections um, on the circular because that's easier. Um, but now we're going to switch to these guys. Won't lie, they're not my favorite. Um, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So 
I'm going to take my beginning of round marker off. Um, the reason is, is I'm going to grab a double point gracefully. And instead of knitting with this needle, I'm going to knit with the new double point. Um, I'm not moving the marker over because the double point is double ended and the marker will just fall off. Um, at this point, if you want, you can add a clippy marker or a safety pin to this section to mark the beginning. Um, or you can also just note that the garter is the beginning of your round. Uh, because there are six sections in the hat and I have four double points, I'm going to put two decrease sections on each double point. So we're just going to knit onto the new needle, similar to how we switch from the brim to the body of the hat. But I'll stop talking and show you. So just put the needle in to knit. This is the decrease round. So just going to knit until two stitches before my marker. Okay, so two stitches before my marker, knit two together, there we go. Um, this marker, because it's between my two sections, is going to move over, and then we're going to keep knitting and doing another decrease. Um, I should have said this before we picked up our double points, but make sure your double points, one, are all the same size as each other, and two are the same size as the needle that you're knitting off of. The amount of times I've accidentally picked up wrong size double points is too high, then your gauge becomes all weird. So double check that now <laughs> if you haven't already. So all right so two stitches before our little garter panel section ends we're going to knit two together there and because that is two decreased sections here I'm going to take my garter marker take it off and just throw it away. Well, not really throw it away. It's in a pile. I don't need it for now. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a new double point so I can put these two sections on a double point. two stitches before the marker, knit two together. We're going to take this marker and we're going to put it aside because we have two sections on that needle. We are going to grab our third double point. The reason we split them up this way is so it's nice and even. You want to make sure you have um, enough stitches where it takes up some of the needle but it isn't coming off the end because obviously they're double ended. They could come off both ends. I'm supposed to keep knitting until I have 10 stitches in each section. I currently have 11, so I'm going to do one more purl knit and then a knit decrease round. Um, and then I will meet you back here for the final section of decreases. We've almost knit a whole hat. Yay! I forgot to mention that to keep knitting, now that we've gotten rid of the 16 inch circular, you will need your fourth double point to continue to knit. So. When we're back at the beginning of our round, we're going to go to purl. We have this like stray double point. So what's going to happen as we work through each section is our working needle is going to become the needle that is holding the stitches. And then the needle that we knit off of is going to become the needle that we use to knit the next section. So the 
because this is our pearl rest round. Just gonna slip that marker like we have before. So now the needle that was in there has become our free needle. So now we're going to turn our work. When you end around, you want to make sure that your stitches are centered and aren't going to come off one end. So as you're knitting along, um, you can either put your needles, like as you're working, they can either go under, they can go over the top. As you're working, you'll kind of know what feels best for you. Um, the needle I'm knitting off of tends to go above the needle I just came off of, and then goes below the one I'm going to work onto. And then the needle that I'm working onto goes underneath. So. Um, it can be a little bit cumbersome, which is why I tend to use magic loop for the top of hats, but it is up to you. After this last decrease section, things change up a little bit. What's going to happen from this point onwards after this decrease round is we're not going to do a rest round like we have before. What we're going to do is we're going to increase the rate of decreases, which is going to create a slightly um, steeper slope. I was going to be like, slopier slope. Nope. Steeper slope. Um, so. Things are going to change up a little bit after this. I'll show you how to do that, but we're just going to just want to give you a heads up. We are about to change things. Things are going to be a little bit different. So we are doing our last decrease here on our all knit round. So what we have been doing at this point is doing a pearl knit rest round because we're going to increase our rate of decreases. We aren't going to do any more rest rounds. We're going to decrease every round and we're going to continue to still do this pearl section. So in the pearl section, what we're going to do is similar to what we've done when it is a knit row. We're going to take our yarn and we're going to purl two stitches before the marker. And then we're going to do what's called a purl two together, which is like a knit two together except we're purling. So you're going to take your needle and you're going to put it through this stitch and then also this one. 
And then we're going to take our yarn over, like we have with other purling, awkwardly over the top. There we go. And it's just going to come off. Because we have another section of purling to do, we're going to do the same thing. first one, second one, just like you would to purl one on its own. Purl two together, over, through. All right, and now we're going to knit, knit two together, knit, knit two together, and do that, and then we'll be back at the beginning, and we're going to do the knit, uh, the knit round with all the decreases on it. So, we're going to keep doing the decrease after decrease rounds. So the purl knit decrease round, which is what I'm currently working on, and then the knit decrease round. We're going to keep doing both of these until we have only six stitches left. So our hat is in six small sections, so we're going to have one stitch per section. When you get to that round, because you're just going to be doing knit two togethers all the way around, if you want you can take out your middle markers when you get to that section. Uh, but that is up to you. You leave them on there. I will show you how to take them off when we get to the last stage of the hat. We're almost there, guys. You can do it. Okay, so we have made it. We now only have our last six stitches left, and we have what looks like a hat underneath it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut our yarn. Um, you want to leave a decent tail. It's not a super scientific amount, but we want enough to be able to... Uh, cinch these guys together and also weave the ends in. So I have about that much tail. Hopefully that helps. It's not quite like an arm's length. It's probably about at least 12 inches. So now we're gonna thread our needle. Hopefully, yep, fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that the yarn isn't going over top of the needle like that. We want it to make just be coming off the needle. We're going to take our darning needle, we're going to go into the stitch purlwise because that stops it from twisting. I'm going to pull it off and then pull the yarn through. We're going to take our marker off, put it to the side, our other stitch. We're going to go in purlwise, pull our yarn through. We now have this extra double point. It can also go on the side. We're going to do the same thing for the other needle. Well, we're going to do the same thing for both needles that are left. So take that off. The other marker or other stitch off. All right, so we have our final needle. We're going to do the same thing. comes off, marker goes down, and the last stitch, I'll pull that yarn through. So now we have our hat with two ends coming off of it. Uh, since we already have the top, uh, top end on a darning needle, I'm just going to Pull it up to the top here. We're just gonna, I guess, lay the hat a little bit flat so we can look at the top. Um, what I like to do at the top of, so I'm just gonna rotate this. What I like to do at the top of my hats after I have cinched all the ends together, um, just to give me a little peace of mind, even though we are gonna weave in the ends, I like to tie a little knot just so that this hole doesn't get any bigger. Um, it's currently very small, I would like to stay that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go underneath the legs of a couple of stitches. Um, it's not super scientific, I just want to take a little bit of the hat, or not the hat, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of the fabric, put the needle underneath, take the yarn, and just go under and around. 
And then I'm just gonna pull the yarn through. So we just have a little knot there. Generally, knots in knitting are not a good call. Um, no pun intended. That just helps me feel more secure that this hole isn't gonna get any bigger. So we're now gonna take the needle and that's just my knot there. So I'm just gonna poke through the hat between the stitches so I can pull this tail to the inside. I'm gonna turn this hat inside out so we can weave in these ends, which is the last step besides blocking, if you wanted to block, uh, which is your call. So what I like to do with my ends, um, I don't want to weave it into this garter section because it's a little bit of a um, looser fabric. This fabric back here will be a little bit tighter in the stockinette section. So what I'm going to do is take my yarn and I'm going to work it through, gonna work it through the camera will focus. We're going to work it through the smiles and the frowns of the stockinette section. I'm going to go over for a bit, then I'm going to go down and go back over just to stop the yarn from working its way out. Because this is wool, hopefully eventually it will felt, um, well, hopefully it'll felt the end in a little bit as it's being worn. Um, Close to the top, I'm not being super scientific with this. I just wanna get the yarn a little bit farther down. So I was just sticking it through stitches kind of randomly. But we have the little smile stitch here that my yarn is close to. So I'm just gonna put my needle down through the smile. And then I have a frown, so I'm gonna go up through there. gonna find another actually I think the next one is a decrease each section will be probably a little bit different depending on what you're working on so like I have like there's a big gap here in like the fabric because there's a decrease and it goes over to this other section so instead of trying to work over more I'm gonna adapt and go down so I'm gonna try there we go I go down and then because I was going this way before I'm now going to go the other way so okay so we're going to go down through that smiley face or smile it's not really a whole face up through the frown that's next to it down through the smile I am getting to a decrease line here, so I'm just going to take the yarn down through that smile, down to the one below it. Maybe. There we go. I'm going to go... over a couple. Now, I think there's a general rule about needing to do this for a few inches. Um, I do this until I feel like my hat is secure, um, or that my end is secure. However long that is for you, um, that's up to you. I would say you do this at least a couple of times. We don't want the end to pop out. We don't want the hat to unravel. Um, so if you're unsure, I would always suggest doing it a few more times. Weaving in ends is never anything someone that people like to do. There's like a rare unicorn that enjoys weaving in ends. Um, but it's an important skill as a knitter and it'll make your finished products look even better. Okay, so that to me feels good. So take my yarn out, I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm not gonna cut close, like right close to the hat. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail one, because I am going to block this, um, which means the stitches will shift around a bit. And I don't want the end to pop to the other side of the hat while it's being blocked. Because this is a wool blend, my blocking is going to be um, soaking it with some wool wash, probably Euclan, 
um, for about 20 minutes. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to roll it up in a towel like a burrito and um, then I'm going to lay this flat to dry. So it looks even better. But so with most of our hat, then we have our end here that was our cast on end. So I'm just going to uh, thread my needle and then what I'm going to do is now we flipped our hat inside out already the right side back out but I'm gonna grab I'm just the right side still this way you can tell because most of the fabric is stockinette um, the inside well this is stockinette this is garter the right side of stockinette is knit stitches the wrong side of stockinette is purl stitches which are these guys uh, they are the reverse of each other which is fun okay so to weave in our end on the brim do this a little bit differently um, this is personal preference but i'm going to weave my end up this half column of this knit stitch then i'm going to go over and i'm going to go down i'm also going to then go over and then up a bit because I want my tail to end up near the um, the body of the hat and not the cast on because if it's near the cast on it might show when the hat's being worn so I am just going to take my needle I'm going to go into the right leg of the stitch and I'm going to keep going into the right side of the stitch the same direction all the way up so it's going to kind of like coil So I'm at the second last one from the top. So I'm going to take my needle under the leg of the right side and also the left side. So I'm going to go all the way through. I'm going to flip my hat over and then we're going to go down the left side of the hat. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to move over to the right leg. So, in my ribbing, this is a knit stitch, and then this is a purl, and then this is a knit column as well. So I'm going to take my yarn, and I'm just going to kind of poke it up into one of the purl stitches, so I can pull it over to this other stitch without there being like a bar across them. So, now I'm just going to go up the right side until I reach the top just like we did before Okay, so now that we're near the top, we can trim this end, because that guy's not coming out of there. Again, I want to leave a little bit, a little bit of a tail. So I have room when I block it. Flip it back inside out. And it is all finished. So congratulations, you've officially knit a hat you did it. <laughs> um, at this point you can, if you wanted to, you could put a pom-pom on the top of it. You can wear it as is. I would suggest blocking your hat, but you don't have to. It's clearly a hat regardless of whether or not you block it. But 
congratulations, you did it.